This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL, but we encourage you to like and share them on Facebook. It's time now for the African American scene. Presented by Aha, uh-huh, presented by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie, and hosted each week at this time by Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Oh my, we have a lot going on, as usual, and we're 20 days away from the midterms. Let, let me first just really give you a hard time because you've been had something bad. And I told you this at the time that it was happening. Uh-oh. They cut those taxes and uh, increased defense spending and projected a raise in the deficit of $1.4 trillion. And Mitch said, don't worry about it because the increased revenue from the tax cut would take care of the rising deficit. Well, folks, I told you back then, and I'm telling you today, that was a setup to be able to cut Medicare and Medicaid. Now, if you're a person of means, That doesn't mean anything to you, but I'll tell you this, my conservative friends. You better be worried about your parents and what effect this might have on them because that could directly have an impact on your pocket. And and I want to tell you, I, I cannot believe you fell for that. It was so clear to me that this was coming. You added the tax cut, and you increased military spending by over $700 billion. And then you say, now the deficit's up, so we have to find cuts. And we do what we always tend to do, is go and cut the people that can at least afford to have cuts. Now, let me just tell you this, in case you don't know it. A lot of you who know me know I do Medicare. I sell Medicare products. Do you know many of my clients get additional help for their Medicare from Medicaid? So if you cut Medicare and Medicaid, there's a potential that my customers could get a double whammy cut. But there's some of you out there who really don't care. (laughs) I, I get that. But you know what? How about trying to care? That's, that's a nasty thing they're about to do. And I can't believe you fell for that. You fought and supported that tax cut. You thought that was the right thing to do, and you were hoodwinked. Mitch McConnell lied to you guys, like he unfortunately too often does. But in any event, now that I got that off my chest, and if you want to call up and tell me I'm wrong, phone number is 3401590. That's 3401590. I don't know how you're going to tell me I'm wrong. Because the facts are what they are. And, and let me tell you something else. When they say we have to cut entitlements, that really pisses me off. We paid for Social Security. When I filed for my Social Security benefit, they had my records back to my first job when I was 14. I've been paying for Social Security all that time. That doesn't sound like an entitlement to me. That's something we paid for. Now, you may question the amount of funding available, 
But that's not an entitlement. People paid for it. Okay. So, now that I got that off my chest, boy, that just, I, I got, when I saw that, you have no idea how mad I was because I saw that just coming around the corner just as clear as looking through clear glass. It was just, it was going to happen. I asked a question on Facebook has generated a lot of controversy. So I thought I would introduce it here. The question is, are you a patriot or a tribalist? Which one are you? Are you a patriot or are you a tribalist? Then let's stretch that too. Can a tribalist be a patriot? Mm. Think about that for a second. Can a tribalist be a patriot? But what are you? <coughs> I'd like to hear. Are you a patriot? Are you a tribalist? Do you, you want me to give you? Let, let me let me let me give you a loose definition. A tribalist is someone whose primary concern is the people within his group, his or her group, and no concern or minimal concern, I'll even give minimal, minimal concern for those people outside the group. A patriot is someone who is concerned about his fellow man as a whole, excluding the position of the tribe. The primary focus is on the humanity of the American people. So what are you? Are you a, uh, are you a patriot or tribalist? If you think If you think it is okay for people to not have health care, I say you're a tribalist, big time tribalist, because that is not in the best interest of American humanity. Again, that number is 3401590. That's 3401590. And I, uh, there was a couple things that I had on the agenda last week we really never got to. Uh, one of the things we were talking about was the amendments. Now let me, and, and I think Pam did a really good job of talking about the creation of amendments. Let, let me share my thoughts with you about the amendments and some of these in particular. In particular, number four, is a go. You got to vote for number four. Number four is the restoration of rights for people who have properly served their time and are now uh, trying to enter back into society. There is absolutely no reason why, as people of Christian faith, that a person who has served their time should be denied their citizen's rights for a lifetime for making a mistake. That's contrary to everything that we've ever been taught in the Bible. So uh, I am encouraging you, I am begging you to vote yes on number four. Very, very important. Now, on some of these others here, this is the point that uh, Pam was making, like uh, Amendment 3. Amendment 3 is to force the government 
to accept the majority vote of the public as to whether or not a casino could be built. I think that's a bad idea. Now, on its surface, you're going to probably say, well, why is that a bad idea? Because when you're voting on that, you have no idea about the financial impact that it may have on our state, what resources may be necessary to support it. Just not a good idea. I think that is a decision that has to be left in the hands of our government. Now, the, the other thing here that, uh, the other one here is uh, Amendment 1, I believe, wants to give tax breaks to non-homesteaded property. And I'm going to tell you about, about that. I mean, this is something I've been kind of telling you guys for a while. I'm really concerned about this tax cut frenzy that started with Reagan. We are doing a crappy job of taking care of our infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, just, we're just doing a really, really bad job of that. And part of that is because we have cut back the funding for taking care of things like that. And in fact, listening to a show earlier this week, they said the amount of money available for infrastructure repair and rehabilitation has been cut by 63%. I want you to think about this for a second. I would tell you one of the criteria for homes that are over 25 years old that ask me for insurance, in most cases, I have to get them to get a four-point inspection. And what that four-point inspection says is that the house is in decent condition relative to the age of the house. Otherwise, I got companies that won't even touch it unless they can get that document which certifies condition of the house. I don't think that that's unfair. It costs you 125, 150 bucks. I don't think that's unfair. Do you think it's unfair for them to want to know that your 30-year-old house is in good condition? That you don't still have fuses or or knob tube wiring? I don't think it's unfair. Now, why do I say that? Now, let's take that to our infrastructure. I thought Flint, Michigan, and I may have talked about this last week, gave me a wake-up call. When I saw what happened to those people and the poisoning of children because of the corrosion in the pipes that were of age and mixed with some bad water, I started thinking to myself, what about the pipes in Fort Pierce? I wonder, Cliff, I wonder how old are the pipes that carry the water in Fort Pierce? Now, Port St. Lucie is another uh, story. Probably there's not a pipe in Port St. Lucie that's 50 years old yet. But it's getting probably pretty close to that. But there's probably not a, a, a water pipe in Port St. Lucie that's 50 years old. But what about Fort Pierce? Do you wait until the street collapses or the bridge collapses before you do some maintenance? Do you, if you see your roof and the shingles are falling off of your roof, do you wait until your roof falls in before you get it fixed? So as we continue to demand tax cuts, 
And listen, I don't like paying taxes any more than anybody else, but I'm very concerned about the condition of my country. I don't want to leave my granddaughter, who I love like the end of time, to be in a, in a country where there is no concern about the roads and the bridges that she will have to drive on with herself and her family someday. Because I'll be long gone, but it's still a concern to me. And it should be a concern to you. So careful when you keep asking for tax cuts. Uh, now, amendment number five uh, is something I think I might be able to get behind. It is a bit, con a bit controversial. It limits the ability to raise taxes unless there's a two-thirds vote in the Florida House. But this excludes tax issues on a local and a, a countywide basis. Those are not subject to this rule. So these, these, this rule is subject to those taxes that would be statewide. Mm, there may be some, there might be some uh, thought that this could make sense. Limiting <coughs> an amendment that would require a two-thirds vote in the House and the Senate uh, instead of a simple majority to raise taxes. I, I, I'm not opposed to that. And I, I know that kind of sounds like a conflict with what I just recently said, but I, I have to try to give some level of authority to my government to properly administer the state and the affairs of the state. Um, and I think that is up to them and, and not as much on, up to us because we do not have all the information that they have when they're making those decisions. Um, so that's my position on that. Amendment 5 and Amendment 4 is a yes. And the Amendment 1, the increased homestead property tax exemption, uh, I say no to that. That is basically for property that does not currently have homestead exemption. So we're talking about uh, property that is in, in, many, in many cases just uh, commercial in nature. So uh, I, I think no to that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We talked about Amendment 5. If you have questions on any of the amendments, please call up. And Carlos, I started off tonight that you've been had because I don't think you was thinking you was really happy about that tax cut. And you told me you saw an increase in your paycheck. But now, <laughs> now what? Uh, okay. All right. Oh, this is the other one. Uh, victims' rights, uh, which is Amendment 6. It places into the Florida Constitution victims' rights. It also increased the age for judges to retire to 75 and disallows judges from deferring to government agencies to interpret the law. Now, this is a sneaky one. 
okay? Uh, check out what we're doing here. Scott is about to leave office. And he has had this conservative house and uh, conservative judges for the past eight years. Now, on the surface, it says the victim's rights, but then he sneaks in here, this business about raising the eligibility of judges from 70 to 75. So what's the net effect of that? Okay, now just, just hear me out. Here it is. What's the net, net effect of that? The net effect of that is you will have judges that will get additional five years on the bench that were, in theory, appointed by Governor Scott. What do you think? Wow. <coughs> that is part of what happens with these things. They slip other stuff in there, like Pam was saying last week. And if you're not paying attention, that just goes right on by you, and then you end up voting <coughs> for stuff that you did not actually mean to vote for. So they've been doing that for years though, haven't they? Yes, that's they have. It's been going on a long time. That's why they I guess now they've limited the number of words that can be used in the paragraph on the ballot. Yeah, because they because of that. They they are, have tried they're trying to uh uh get a correction on that because what they do is the uh put the amendments in double speak so that it is very hard to decipher exactly what the question is. So what you might think is a question that means yes could really be a question that's a no, but you didn't get the meaning of it from the amendment because of the way it was worded. Like a trick question. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm I going to say that uh, if you have any, any other questions, uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to, to entertain them. But I still would like to get an question, answer to my qu question. Are you a patriot or a tribalist? Which one are you? Patriot or a tribalist? Winnie, good evening. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. It's a uh, it's a, a question on them, one of my uh about a half cent. I told I had told you about a month ago about the half cent about the roads is bad in Fort Pierce. I moved mm -hmm. back to Fort Pierce, and I had come 13th Street. All that road is so bad. I called a cent on that a while uh, about uh, when I first moved back here, and I, she said it cost two million dollars. They would do the whole street of 13th Street so bad, bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. And she said they don't have the funds. And she would say they go put that on a on a amendment about to have sent, uh, uh, you know, for people to, to vote uh, yes uh, for it. And so they could do a whole lot of these roads and things like that. And so, uh, so what, what's your take on it? Which I vote for a uh, uh, for it anyway, because the road is so bad here. Uh, so what, what, Winnie, what's, what's your take on it? Winnie, that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> you know, people are always <laughs> wanting to cut taxes, and and then after you cut taxes, there's not enough money left to take care of the fundamental things that de need to be taken care of in our community. So under those circumstances, now you're going to have people that are going to be upset I don't care if it was a one-tenth of a cent. They just don't want to raise any taxes at all. I have no objection to raising taxes. What I do say is we have to make sure that they use that money for what they told us they were going to use it for. And if right. they are raising a half a cent so that they can fix things like 13th Street, 
which yeah. I have been on, and that is a bumpy mess. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Then I, I don't have a problem with that. Right, right. Uh, me either, me either. Yeah. I'm telling you, that what she was telling me. They don't have the $2 million good. That's why they did the half cent on amendment. Uh, it, it, and the list goes on. It's a lots of bad road beside 13th Street. Yeah. I say, that's terrible. All these years he rode bad like that in Fort Pitt. That's all. That's bad business. Okay, then we'll be talking. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Okay, okay, Winnie. Almost as bad as Delaware Avenue over there by the armory or between 25th and 33rd is that I guess they've had multiple operations on the street for the for the water pipes and the drainage pipes under the road over the years. So many patches and uh, sometimes it looks like a jigsaw puzzle over there in the road yeah. to drive through. Yeah. I haven't been down that in a long time, but I, I, I recall... Uh, traveling on on that that piece of uh, road, but hey, you know the the thing is, like I said, we we have to we have to positively have to take care of our community. That that's just I- I- incredibly important. And Kurt, on line one, yes, sir. Hello, good evening, Rudy. How's uh, how's it uh, going with you? Okay. Well, you know. You were talking about the amendments and so forth. Uh, the one thing that kind of upsets me, you know, I, they, they want to put these these stupid addend, uh, addendums uh, to the uh, to the amendment. And there's one of them on there that uh, you know, about, they added like there's not going to be any vaping. Yeah. And it's tacked on to this amendment, and I'm thinking, what in the heck does that have to do with anything? Yep. You know, if they want to, if they want to give us a homestead exemption, an additional homestead exemption, then that's what it should be. That it's going to give us an extra x x amount of dollars on 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 a homestead, and either you say yes or or, or no. But now they've got two or three other things added to it. Yep. And the other thing they do, this Amendment 3, which I think has something to do with casino gambling, um, you know, they say, well, let the voters have the, have the final word. But, you know, that sounds good on paper. But I don't think the people of Port St. Lucie or West Palm Beach or any other thing, I don't think the people that we people live in here should have any say so whether they want to build a casino in Tampa or not. I agree. You, I mean, I, I it, and then they word these amendments, Rudy, where you have to be a damn Philadelphia lawyer to understand them. I, we were just talking. We were yeah. just talking about that, Kurt. You know, I, 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 I mean, I think I consider myself a, 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 a more intelligent than than the average adult. But well, when I start looking at these senior uh, at these at these amendments, I feel I feel like I'm stupid. Yes, I understand. And is and, and but maybe that's what the politicians are hoping for. Absolutely, Kurt. Yeah. So they 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 don't want you to clearly understand. And well, I, and, and, and then they put advertise these things. And, and they allow these the advertising on television and radio, and unfortunately, you can't. I, I can't anymore believe either side. Who's telling the truth? Uh, you know, I mean, is the amendment good or bad? And you, you can't seem to get a uh, you can't seem to get an honest answer. You know, the newspaper says you shouldn't vote for this or you shouldn't vote for that, but but. You know, with all these um, all these additional addendums added to it, I mean, I just can't understand. You know, we're voting for we're voting for dog racing or not to have dog racing, and then they come up with some stupid uh, amendment on there, like, uh, oh well, uh, if you vote no for dog racing, then you're not going to allow uh, uh, any sort of uh, vaping. And you know, you know what I'm saying as yes, an example. I and I, I think, wait, what the hell does this have to do with dog racing? I, I listen. I I agree, and 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 you're right. It it is designed for those people that don't read and study and and those kinds of things. 
this is a really daunting task to try to go through these and, and make a, a decision. Well, I think it's part of the what uh, what uh, a radio talk show host, which will go unnamed for now, calls a low information voter. <laughs> and when you stop and think about it, Rudy, the way I mean, the way some of this stuff gets put up, that they're they're assuming that 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 the voters are stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll tell you in in my family. I, I can't speak for everybody else, but in, in my family, when it comes time to vote, we dialogue. Sometimes we even have a, a meeting and a conference with my sister, my brother-in-law, my wife, mm-hmm. myself. A lot of times uh, we're starting to include our son now. Okay. We, we actually sit down and go through all these things and say, okay, this is what is this, and this is why I support that. So, do you yeah. do you lock up your guns and knives before you start this discussion? <laughs> no, we're no, <laughs> no, it never can never gets that bad. <laughs> okay, I, I'm well, just teasing, of course, but, uh, but yes, but if you want to, if if you know, if you want to make enemies of your best buddy, sometimes discussing politics can do that very nicely. Yes, it, yeah. yes, it can. Oh, yes, oh, by it can. all means, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So, okay, right. I, I, I had a... Oh, I was just going to mention an aside here, too. Fort St. Lucie is not going to have to worry about uh, getting lead poisoned or anything. Uh, all of our pipes in Fort St. Lucie, Rudy, our sewer and water pipes are all plastic. Okay. So, you know, we may die of some chemical in the water, but we're not going to die from uh, from contamination for lead or anything like that because our pipes are all plastic. Okay, that's good to know. So even the sewer pipe that goes to your your little deal in the front yard, you know, your your uh, your tank there, that's all plastic. Okay. Thanks so for that information. I, I just throw it out. Fort Pierce, since that city is, what, 100 years old or and more? Or more, yeah. I, I would imagine a lot of the downtown stuff in the in the original Fort Pierce area. That's probably the old uh, uh, cast iron pipe. I don't think it's lead. I think uh, it, it's probably cast iron. Yeah. yeah. But but the the new stuff in Fort Pierce, I'm sure, is plastic. They just can't afford to pay the labor. To and you remember when the plumber would come to your house and he'd put a drain a waste line in your house? How they had to use the lead and the oakum. Yeah, you're old enough to remember that. Yeah, and they don't do that anymore. It's all PVC now. Put some glue on it and shove it together, and you're good to go. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Kurt. Okay, Rudy. All have right. a good uh, Wednesday. We'll talk to you next week. Okay. All righty. And, oh, listen, I forgot to tell you this. This is very important before I go to Jay because uh, my buddy Jay is on the phone. Uh, Andrew Gillum will be here this Saturday at Lincoln Park at uh, 1 o'clock. So if you want to come out and see uh, Andrew Gillum, uh, it's Lincoln Park at 1 o'clock. And I saw him in Stewart two weeks ago, and he, and he, he is pretty awesome. And we have Jay on line two yes jay yeah this is curtis on line two. Oh, sorry oh. curtis let me let me fix this here we had <laughs> well, wait a minute where, yeah where that, that's the second that's the second time uh <laughs> okay let's yeah. see okay but, um hold on a second because we're gonna have to find uh let's see if we can find jay uh, is that jay on okay. line three okay jay are you on the line oh jay just accidentally got bumped let me let me put everybody on hold to get jay back and I guess you can go uh, yeah, to Ralph next. Yeah, let's go with Kirk. Yeah, and, and Jay will get back with us. Okay, so who are we going with now? I think it's, is this Ralph on line two? No, it was Curtis. Oh, Curtis. I'm sorry, Curtis. Uh, oh, okay. oh, I see what happened. All right. Okay, Curtis. Okay. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing good. How y'all doing over there? Okay. Other than okay, the confusion I'm, we're having. Um. Well, you know, it happens. Yeah. Um. Amendment... Uh, 11 and uh, amendment 12. Okay. Um, I was having a little problem with those two, so I got some guidance from the League of Women Voters and also the Palm Beach Post. Mm-hmm. But um, got you live on Wednesday night, Rudy, so I'd like to know 
how you feel about those two amendments. What's your interpretation? Uh, I'll uh, get off the line and listen to what you got to say on 11 and 12. Okay. I don't, I don't, let me see. I, I don't know if I have the information on 12. I got 11 right here. Hold okay. On. Let me see if I got 12. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, let me, I'll tell you what I, what I have. Uh, Amendment 11. Uh, the base, it bans public officials from lobbying. No, is that, is that the same thing? No, that's not. Okay, wait a minute. Here it is. Okay. Property uh, rights removal of... Yeah, I got it. Property rights removal. Provision. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this amendment repeals bans on aliens owning property in the state. The requirement for high-speed rail systems from the Florida Constitution and other items. Now, mm. yes, it sounds like they're trying to be a little slippery. They bounce from one, uh, one area to another all of yeah. a sudden. Now, here's what I have as supporters for that measure. Uh, the supporters are the Florida Chamber of Commerce, the uh, ACLU, the Florida Pop Policy Institute, and the Southern Poverty Law Center, which that's pretty good. And the, the critics point out that the Constitutional Revision Commission has again bundled a few different issues into one amendment. Mm -hmm. Ad additionally, many civic reformers believe such members should be resolved by the governor and the legislature. They don't belong on the state constitution. Uh, so that is pretty much the position on 11. And that position is no? The, well, the, the, Main parties are saying yes. Okay. I, I understand why the, the no is because of that last thing. Right. They, they slid in there about the high-speed rail. But uh, overall, yes. Well, and, and, and I'll tell you, the high-speed rail has been a, a big controversy, but I, I believe, especially for our seniors, we have to make it easier for people to get around and not necessarily have to drive so jump I'm, on a train and go to miami for lunch yeah, <laughs> yeah. and be back for dinner yeah. right <laughs> okay so uh here is the number 12 lobbying and abuse of office by public officers now i'm going to give you the plain english version bans public officials from lobbying for money while they are in office and for a period of six years after leaving office. So, here are the people that support that. Common Cause, Florida Policy Institute, and Integrity Florida. The opponents of it are Florida Chamber of Commerce and Save My Constitution. What's what's my my thoughts on that is I don't have a problem with the law fundamentally. I'm not sure six years is fair after leaving office. Uh, that that that's my issue with it. Uh, banning public officials from lobbying uh, for money while in office. That's a no brainer. Right. But the. Uh, Allowing them, making them uh, six years before they can lobby and get paid, eh, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So, so there, you, a, there you yes have it, 11 and, 12, 11 and 12. Uh, was that a yes on 12? I would say no. I'm going to say no okay. because six years is too long. The Okay. The, fun, the fundamental premise of the uh, law, I agree with, but I, I think six years can be could be construed to be punitive. Right. Okay. okay yeah. Uh, it's um, these amendments. Um, 
Yes. It's almost like they write them in reverse of what they should mean. Yes. And and there's other stuff hidden behind them that you don't get to see because you were reading some stuff that I can't see on the actual uh, ballot. Yeah, I know. That, that's and, what uh, Pam was talking about last week. Right. Yeah. And it's just, um, I guess that's the reason why a lot of people don't even mess with the uh, amendments. They just leave yep. that section. Some people just skip over that completely. Yes, you're right. Right, right. Okay, th- okay, sir. I appreciate it. Are oh, you welcome? Thank you. And we have. I think we have Ralph on line three. Okay, Ralph. Yes. All good right. evening, gentlemen. How are y'all doing tonight? Okay. Thankful that you're there. <laughs> I would like to chime in on Amendment 13. Okay. Now. This is dog race at State yep, of Florida. I got it. Okay. I don't know if either yourself, uh, Mr. Howard or, or Cliff, when you go home, when you open the door, if there's a cane on on the other side of that door wagging his tail ready to treat you like you hadn't seen a, you in five a, years. A Mastiff Pit Bull mix. Hey, I am a dog lover. I have a red nose pit. I've got a Belgian Mally. All rescues. The, I've got, since I retired last year at 62, well, I'm, that was a long time ago. I'm 69 now. But I started taking dogs nobody else wanted and trained them. I've got four at present. And I'm just a dog lover. I've got a little beagle, a little mutt. I just take them in when nobody, you're allowed five in Port St. Lucie. I've often thought, well, I've got four. Maybe I need to get, it, get up to the limit. But anyway, what Amendment 13 is it going to do? is ban the greyhound racing in Florida. And I did some research. It is a very, very cruel sport. These greyhounds are beautiful animals. They're they talk are. about greyhounds in the book of Proverbs in the Bible. They they're are gorgeous animals. They are beautiful, yes, they are. They're fast. They're le- They're smart. They're good. They're great. There's a lady that just not too far from me to rescue, too. <laughs> and they have these uh, agencies that will take them over. But what they do is, just for the... The, the evilness of gambling, so some maniac could put, but they, they give them cocaine, and oftentimes these dogs have massive heart attacks, and it just kills them. People don't realize the cruelty in it. I didn't and I've know got, that. I've got the stickers on my car that says, and vote yes on 13, and uh, it'll phase out the dog tracks by, by 2000. Now, years ago, and I, this is probably 30, 40 years ago, as I said, I'm 69 years old now. When I lived in Hollywood, Florida, I actually worked at Gulfstream at the racetrack, the, the horse track. I got to work in the garage right behind the starting gates. And the saddest days that I would have, this would just ruin my, my day, my week. When I saw the vet station wagon pull up and they take that big needle out and they had to put one of those beautiful thoroughbreds down. I don't agree with it. horse racing either, but now we have a chance to at least let's get rid of the dog racing. Okay. And, and and I appreciate you letting me have that say on the air. I appreciate your show. Uh, Mr. Howard, do you recall maybe a year or so back a man came into your office and gave you a tape of music, uh, a CD? Yes. That was me. Oh, okay. My, my your buddy, friend, Chris your Wilson. buddy. Yes, I still have that. Do you listen to that music? I have listened to that. Yes, I have. Oh, I, what a vocalist. I still miss him so much to this day. My best friend from... I'm up in Lyndhurst, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, but that was me, and, and uh, I just really, once again, I appreciate you, and I appreciate your show, I appreciate Cliff, uh, and tell him that swap shop worked for me a couple times, too. Oh, you hear the jackpot okay, once in a right. while, huh? <laughs> There you go. You, you, you gentlemen have a wonderful evening. Okay. Thank you. I, I have to take a quick break. Yeah, and then we can get with Chuck when we get back, right? Yeah, Chuck, hang on. I just got to take a quick break. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of the African-American scene. And don't forget, uh, there's 10 minutes left in the show. That includes the break. So uh, maybe when we're done talking to Chuck, somebody else might have a question. 772-340-1590. Rudy will be right back.
Serving the entire Treasure Coast, Howard Insurance and Associates in Port St. Lucie offers a wide variety of insurance products, along with the very best customer service. Whether you're shopping for the best homeowner's coverage at the most affordable value, contact Rudy Howard's team at Howard Insurance and Associates. If you need coverage for your vehicle, call Howard Insurance and Associates, 343-9878. That's 343-9878. Maybe you're planning to add a boat, motorcycle, or RV Call Howard Insurance and Associates for your free quote at 343-9878 and get the coverage you need at a cost that will fit your budget. For home or business, auto or recreational vehicle, choose Howard Insurance and Associates, 600 Southwest Darwin Boulevard, Suite 206, Port St. Lucie. And for your free rate quote, call them at 343-9878, 343-9878. WPSL Treasure Coast Weather with meteorologist Steve Villanueva is brought to you this hour by Seacoast Air Conditioning. Good evening, everyone. Storm Team 5 meteorologist Steve Villanueva here. As we head into tonight, we'll see partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s, so it will be quite warm with about a 20% chance of a coastal shower. But we'll have an easterly wind at 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow's a warm day, 88 degrees, so definitely on the warmer side. But generally dry conditions. Once again, very dry air sitting on top of us. So at best, about a 20% chance of a shower or a storm. But the winds do stick around. It does stay quite breezy with gusts up to 20 miles an hour. I'm WPTV Storm Team 5 meteorologist Steve Illinois for WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Weather this hour is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning, your hometown air conditioning company since 1982. For repairs or a whole new system, call 772-466-2400. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And just before we get back to the phones and all that here on the African American scene tonight, just wanted to let you know that archives of this show are on YouTube. Rudy is all over YouTube, with, including last week with, uh, with Pam Keith. Go to WPSLTV.com. Well, we do have Chuck on the line, and then Jay right behind him, Rudy. Okay, Chuck. Hey, Rudy. Yes, sir. Okay, on your first question, uh, I've been doing research in tribalism. Uh, if you, you tribalism, tribalist does not exist in the dictionaries. Tribes and tribalism do. Okay. Uh, a, a tribe is a group of people sharing an occupation interests or habit, uh, like a tribe of graduate students. And uh, a tribalism is a, an organization, culture, beliefs of a tribe, strongly feeling or identifying with the loyalty of them. And a patriot is, of course, one who loves, supports, and defends one's country. So really, asking if somebody is a part of a family and or one who loves our country if we we love our country are we not part of a family well by your definition you answered the question really if you if your loyalty and commitment is to your tribe then that supersedes your commitment to the country no that's not what i said I'm trying to say that if you are a patriot, you can be part of a tribe because your tribe is, is American or, you know, a member of this country. Tribalism and patriotism would probably be one and the same thing. So the question isn't really, I don't think where you could delineate it between tribe or patriotism. It's, uh, I think maybe you should label it, are you a patriot or not a patriot? No, I, I, I think that what, 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 I, what I'm attempting to do is to try to get people, as, as I told you in, in our Facebook post, mm-hmm. to... Do some self-examination. I want people, 
when I throw things out like that sometimes, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to provoke thought. I'm trying to get people yeah, yeah. To, to think, is my tribe more important than my country? That's, that's, see, that's really the, the sum and substance of the question. Is, is, my, is my tribe more important than the country? Is your okay. political party more, more important than the country is, is basically what you could put in instead of the word tribe, right? Yes, yeah. Sa- same thing. Okay, well, you do, well then why don't uh, we put it out that way? Is your political party, which I'm not a member of either one, uh, more important than being a patriot? Are you, a, you know, are you a political tribist or a, uh, a patriot? Okay, I, I won't. I won't argue that with you. But yeah, I think you know. Just the question you asked this has bothered me the whole time, and I, and I think that's what the whole thing is. Is the question isn't really delineated down to its fine point. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that I made you think about that. That's a good thing. Well, I'm uh, glad you. I'm glad you thought along with me. Yes, that's right. yes, sir. <laughs> okay, Chuck, I got another hey, let call. Let me go, so Jake. Yeah, I was going to say, let me go so Jay can get down there. Okay. All right, Chuck. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Okay, you too. Jay. Hey, Jay. Hello, I'm here. Yes, sir. Oh, Rudy, could you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. You know, no, I wanted to talk about the right to restore, uh, you know, felons back to the back to uh, getting their citizenship back. But with your last caller, forgotten. When I was in the military, when we were in that foxhole, we didn't care what your, you know, what your tribe was. Uh, we had to depend on each other to live. Right to, to survive. So yes. it didn't matter if you were white supremacist or whatever you were or whatever your nationality was. It wasn't about color. It wasn't about race. It wasn't about tribe. It was about survival. And we all tried to survive and tried to save each other's life because we didn't know the guy next, next to me might have saved my life uh, or vice versa. So we had to you know, look out for each other. And that's what's missing in, the, in America today. Amen. Uh, and that's why the draft should have been continued so everybody would have that that real feeling about America and what, we, what we're all about, what, what's more important. You know uh, what, Jay? There's so much truth to what you said because, you know, mm-hmm. the other time when you see that happen mm-hmm. is in sports. When you are in on the, be- the field of battle right. with your teammates, all the other crap is gone because that's your teammate. And you're on a mission, and the mission is to win with the people that you're there with. And and that is the part we have lost completely in this country. And I, and I think we lost it because, you know, a, a lot, only about 1% or 2% of, of, the, of the population actually served, served this country. And they have no idea what it is all about. But when, once you get in there and, you, and you're with all, people from all backgrounds and all races and creeds, uh, it's not about race, it's about uh, committing a mission or whatever you got to do to save each other because that's what they're there for. But the thing I want to talk about, I just hope that people understand right to restore uh, convicted felons, their right to be uh, American citizens again uh, should be the number one uh, thing that people, once once you you, know, you get down that line, that's what it's all about. These people serve their time to society. Seems like every time we get a Republican in as the, the governor, they always go back to uh, uh, Jay, you know, I, I talked about that at the start of the show. Uh, vote good, yes. Sorry, I missed it. That's yes. okay. Vote yes for Amendment 4. Okay, uh, man. Have okay. a nice day. Okay, nice John, nice evening. I'm okay. sorry I didn't get to you. Okay. Please, just, I... John, you know, uh, call back next week. Listen in, and we'll get you on. Uh, folks, I'd like to thank you so much for listening to the African-American scene. God bless and be safe, and I'll see you next Wednesday right here for the African-American scene. And this is WPSL, Port St. Lucie.